Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who is attending today our first event initiated by the International Society for Terrain Vehicle Systems. This is the very first uh, virtual meeting with the I hear my echo. Uh, please uh, turn off your uh, microphones, it would be probably better. Uh, this is the very first uh, um, digital meeting with the editorial board and advisory board of the Journal of Terra Mechanics to speak with our authors, our potential authors, students, uh, faculty members, industry, uh, research agencies all around the world, members and non-members of the society. Uh, today, jointly with um, um, editorial, with uh, another editor-in-chief, Dr. David Gorsuch, um, the two of us will be running this event, uh, slides by slides, talking uh, with you on different topics. And I appreciate if we could share the very first slide of the presentation. I cannot see it, but Andreas, probably you can share the slides. I will do so now. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So you see the editorial, um, uh, the editors of the journal and jointly with the editorial board members, we will be uh, talking today about different uh, um, issues and uh, items and uh, topics related to the journal. But before we go there, let me introduce the president of uh, ISTVS, International Society for Terrain Vehicle Systems, Dr. Karina Sandu. Uh, she will open the event and tell us a couple of words. Uh, Karina, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, we appreciate everybody's time and effort to participate in our event. Um, I am very happy that we have this opportunity to uh, present to, to a larger audience uh, our journal um, to discuss a little bit more about its scope and about uh, how to submit papers, what topics are of interest for our society, and to encourage everyone to, uh, to make future contributions to the journal. Um, I personally joined the uh, ISTBS in 2002. Um, I was very, very excited about the opportunity uh, to be part of this community. Um, through the years, uh, I, I really uh, enjoyed being together with our friends in the society. We really are a tight community and we welcome you to join us. Um, and uh, the fact that in the last uh, couple of years we had to move online, um, in fact, gave us more opportunities to interact more often. We used to have uh, one, uh, one meeting in person per year. Um, in the last uh, year, we met almost uh, on a weekly basis with, uh, with uh, different people and in different configurations. So with this, uh, I want to uh, welcome everyone again. Um, I appreciate your contributions to the journal, uh, of course, the editors in chief, um, the associate editor of the editors, and uh, also, of course, the authors who submit to our journal. Uh, it's absolutely uh, important for our society to, to be visible and to uh, show the world the kind of research that we are conducting here. So uh, with this, I want to thank you and uh, turn the microphone back to Vladimir. Thank you very much, Karina. Uh, thank you for the, uh, your kind words, introduction, and the uh, scope of our discussion for today. Thank you. Uh, please go ahead to the next slide. Uh, today, um, uh, we will be uh, talking a little bit about the history of our journal. As you can see, it was founded in 1964, and three names listed over here, they were the very first editors uh, and managers of this journal. Uh, in 1996, uh, another subtitle was added, Application to Terrain Vehicle Systems. 
And in 2007, it was changed to application to terrain machine systems because not necessarily vehicles, but could be farm tractor machinery and uh, farm tractor tools, um, which, uh, which work together with the farm tractor or any other machine and uh, interacting with the soil and uh, soil thermomechanics is very important for describing and analyzing those uh, integrated machines. In the 2010s, it was a very um, important event in our society and the journal as a publishing organ of the society when we included uh, uh, other planet rovers into our research scope. And for the past probably um, two, three years, we continually discuss in, in our editorial board new directions for the journal, new topics, uh, new areas of our interest, which would be related to, to terra mechanics, would allow us to keep the core of terra mechanics as it was founded many years ago. But at the same time, while we're keeping the core, we'll be bringing more new research and engineering areas which would extend our research and um, to designing vehicle systems and vehicles for off-road applications and so on and so forth. And today, um, we listed here for the purpose of this event, four checks. You can see them on the screen. Um, this is what we want to talk today mostly. This is the current status and metrics of the journal. Where we are now, how we are doing, um, are we healthy, health journal? We can move forward and uh, present more interesting research for you, for uh, younger researchers. What would be the scope and aim of the journal for the next years to come? And we worked on this uh, a lot. And finally, we uh, submitted to the board of the directors of the journal, of the society, and the board of directors approved the updated scope, and we discuss it with the advisory board, all uh, people involved in the society, uh, executive, uh, they uh, approve the scope and it finally was posted recently at our website. We will talk about new research and engineering areas and uh, requirements for the quality of for, uh, submissions. Uh, Dr. Gorsuch, if you have something else to add at this moment, please uh, get in and uh, then we will proceed to the next slides. Everything you said, Vladimir. Okay, thank you. So next slide, please. Um, this is the editorial board. Uh, we have two editors-in-chief and six editors. Uh, you see all uh, pictures and the names and affiliations on this slide. And our intent is to give the floor to each editor, and each editor will introduce himself using the PowerPoint slides or without PowerPoint slides and briefly talk about uh, his affiliation and position, primary research area, activities in the society, how many years they serve for the Journal of Terra Mechanics, uh, their role, area of expertise in the journal, uh, how they work on special issues or any other related topics, uh, please go ahead and do. And we begin with uh, Professor Skalk Els. Please, uh, next slide. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. Um, I must say we're having a late afternoon thunderstorm here in South Africa. So if you hear strange noises in the background, it's simply the weather and some rain. Uh, my name is Kalk Els. Uh, I'm from Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering at the University of Pretoria in South Africa. Uh, I'm a professor and the leader of the Vehicle Dynamics Group, and we are primarily working in off-road vehicle dynamics. Uh, but it include controllable suspension systems as well as uh, so that's where we uh, make an off -road vehicle off-road machine picture. I attended my first ISTV con ISTVS conference in 1997 in Ferrara, uh, an event that I uh, still remember very well. Um, I was elected as the Regional Secretary for Africa in 2008, then organized the European Regional Conference in South Africa in 2012, which I think many of the audience members attended. 
um, I've been elected as the Deputy General Secretary for Europe, Africa in 2017. So I've been involved with the society for quite some years. Um, I'm a very strong supporter of getting students involved with ISTBS, so not only established researchers, people here. Uh, and I'm a very strong supporter of the Student Research Seminar on Mechanics by which today's event is a part. So that is a our attempt on a bi-weekly basis every now and then to get the society together. I've been an editor of the journal for 10 years. I've published 33 papers in the Journal of Telemechanics myself. And uh, before I became the editor, I acted as a reviewer for 22 papers. Uh, nowadays, I do not review much for the journal because I have an editorial role, uh, but I still do reviews for other journals. Uh, as I mentioned before, my areas of expertise mainly lie in the dynamics of off-road vehicles, uh, especially those with large tires and systems in order to improve tight comfort and safety and stability of these vehicles. Thank you very much, Skalk. And uh, next uh, is Raymond Gonzalez, please. And uh, please, Raymond, go ahead. Hello, Vladimir. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ramon Gonzalez. I'm the CEO of Robonity. Robonity is an MIT agri-tech startup based in Almeria in Spain. So our main goal is to develop uh, new products, uh, new uh, innovative products, and mainly focus on agriculture. And the main technologies that we use is is uh, robotics and artificial intelligence and also uh, big data business intelligence etc uh, so the main uh, feature of our products is that they are very simple to use and very easy to scale and also we have projects r d projects mainly dealing with uh, autonomous vehicles and uh, mobile robots as you can see here one of our robots called kennedy uh, so uh, my main uh, kind of uh, relation with ISTBS, uh, so I am a member of ISTBS since 2016. Uh, just one quick uh, note, just a few uh, weeks ago, I was very glad to receive the Sothe Hatta Jureka Award. Um, I also uh, co-organized with Massimo Martelli the first ISTBS professional course on trending tools and application of the mechanics as part of ISTBS 2019 in Prague in Czech Republic. I was also involved in the watch parties of Thuron rover and the Perseverance rover by, by NASA. And uh, related to Journal of Terra Mechanics, um, I was editor, I am editor since 2018 uh, with a special focus on artificial intelligence. And also, I uh, work with Lute Richer in a special section uh, called Artificial Intelligence Applied to Terra Mechanics. Uh, so my main uh, research lines are focused on applying artificial intelligence to uh, making autonomous uh, vehicles, mobile robots, etc., with a special focus on and trying to avoid uh, embedding situation, slippage, Etc. So, uh, you know, especially improving the mobility of those vehicles by using artificial intelligence related techniques. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raymond. And uh, I would like to add that uh, this direction on intelligent controls, artificial intelligence uh, applications uh, to terra mechanics and off road mobility, uh, our journal included uh, probably somewhere beginning of uh, 2017, 16, 17 time frame. And since then, we actively develop in this area in the journal. Um, so next is uh, Dr. Tom Wei. Tom, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Vladimir. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tom Wei, uh, agricultural engineer with the uh, National Soil Dynamics Laboratory in the USA. Uh, <laughs> from USDA in Auburn, Alabama is shown here. And uh, next slide, slide please. Uh, our research facility is this uh, National Soil Dynamics Laboratory. Uh, and it has the soil bins shown here uh, with the 13 soil types 
uh, ranging from uh, very sandy sand to uh, some uh, from some very high clay content soils too. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're on the edge of Auburn University campus, and unfortunately, Auburn University will be taking over this three hectares of property um, sometime in the next couple of years, and uh, and we've been told uh, basically be no soil bins at the at the new facility where we're moving to unless unless we can show some stakeholder support. But anyway, I, yeah, I've been with uh, ISTVS. I think I joined in about 1992, and um, I, I'm. Uh, one of the editors. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, I believe this is a very unique facilities, and uh, I look forward to continue to collaborate with you. My PhD students, they really enjoy testing small robots, small unmanned vehicles in, those, in that facility. And definitely would be a unique uh, opportunity for us also to talk about this on the pages of our journal. Thank you very much, Tom. So, next is, uh, please, next slide. So, Genya Ishigami, please uh, go ahead, Genya. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. I had a trouble with my audio, but right now it's okay. Yeah, I'm Genya Ishigami. I'm working at Keio University in Japan. As you see in this slide, uh, I have devoted myself to Terra Mechanics as an editor since 2018, and I've been doing some research related to Terra Mechanics as well as uh, field robotics, as you see in this. Uh, slides. Uh, in the middle of the photo, uh, we have set up a new test field in in this June, July, and we have a bunch of robot tests of it. And can you go to the next slide? Uh, here, yes, uh, I have picked up some research highlights from our recent works. The photos in the left box show several um, sensor systems that kept capture interaction phenomena. And the middle one is the work with Professor Ozaki participating today and Professor Kobersi. Uh, here we, we have we have developed a hour shaped uh, hourglass shaped uh, test device and um, brought it to the International Space Station for revealing uh, gravity dependent characteristics of barium matter. And the right one is the bucket test bench, and we apply the machine running technique to 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 literally predict solid deformation before or during the bucket excavation. Uh, that's all I have for here for today. Thank you very much. Please next slide, Andrews. We have two more. Uh... Editors, please, Dr. Mihari Tekesti, please introduce yourself if you're here. Vladimir, this is Tom Way, and I've been texting with Mihari, and he's unable to connect. Um, I can give a brief summary for him if you'd like. Yeah, sure, please, go ahead. Tom. So, yes, I've been working with Dr. Mihari Tekesti. Uh, um, he's uh, uh, on the faculty assistant professor at I Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa, USA. And... Um, uh, he's done a, a, a lot of work over the years with um, discrete element method uh, modeling um, of various and uh, including uh, some with, uh, with soil uh, and, and uh, he's a teaching research position in Iowa State and um, uh, so he's, he's really interested in uh, some soil tire interaction work and applying uh, DEM discrete element method element method, possibly along with that finite element method to that uh, modeling. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Um, we have one more uh, editor, Jody Preedy. Uh, Jody, very well known by his publications in the Journal of Terra Mechanics, and he joined the editorial uh, board very recently. Please go ahead and introduce yourself, Jody. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, so, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Jody Preedy. And I'm a senior research engineer working for what is essentially the research and development division of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, where this research organization is known as the U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center, or ERDIC. Most people think about work concerning dams and rivers when they think the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, but actually the bulk of what the Corps of Engineers does involves support to the Army's warfighting functions. ERDIC does R&D not only for the Corps of Engineers, though, 
We also do uh, R&D for many organizations across the U.S. Army and the broader Department of Defense. I've been working with ERDIC for about three decades now, first as a private contractor and then as an Army civilian employee. I spent all of that time in a unique area of R&D concerning ground vehicle mobility, and in particular, off-road aspects of vehicle performance, both involving manned and unmanned vehicle platforms. ERDIC primarily focuses on how terrain, environment, and weather conditions impact vehicle mobility performance. And we've had a close partnership with the U.S. Army's DEVCOM Ground Vehicle Systems Center uh, that Dr. Gorsick is from, and you'll probably hear a little more about today. My career experience includes physical testing in laboratory and field environment settings with military vehicles and prototypes, all the way down to uh, component level prototypes, and development of modeling, simulation, and analysis capabilities. I'm currently serving as the project manager for a long-term program that is producing MNS software tools for uh, ground vehicle acquisition support under the Department of Defense's High Performance Computing Modernization Program. I've been involved with ISTVS most of my career, going back to the late 1990s. My involvement has included participation in and serving on organizing committees for conferences and work for the Journal of Terra Mechanics. For the journal, I participated through authorship as a peer reviewer and now as an editor for the past year. I thoroughly enjoyed my interactions over the years with the Society and our journal, and I look forward to seeing where the journey takes ISTVS and the Journal of Terra Mechanics over the coming years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jody. Uh, so we introduced six editors, and uh, as I mentioned in the very beginning, we have two editors-in-chief. And Dr. Gorsuch, please take a couple of minutes to introduce yourself uh, to the audience. I cannot see. Is Dr. Gorsuch is here? I see he's just uh, joining the chat quickly. Okay. okay. Um, while he, oh, oh yes, yeah, he's here. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry, David Richard, sure. yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I just refreshed my browser as someone suggested. Uh, yeah, I'm chief scientist for grounds. I'm a senior research scientist for the research program at the ground Vehicle center. Uh, we have a very on um, uh, robotic systems and off-road. So some of the areas that we've done in terms of predicting off-road mobility for regular ground vehicles, that whole area has been re-energized to try to understand what it means to have an autonomous system go off. What What is the prediction of mobility? So it's an exciting area. Uh, I've uh, different areas. I've been involved in reliability uh, of ground systems and underbody blast and uh, I got a PhD in applied math, so I have a, uh, a joy of working with still mathematics and uh, doing and so. Uh, fortunately, I spent angles publishing and reviewing papers. Uh, so I think that's about it, Vladimir. Thank you very much, David. And um, a couple of words about myself. I'm a professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, my area of research and engineering is off-road multi-wheel vehicles. And the primary concern is the power distribution between the wheels and how this impacts uh, tire ground interaction, energy efficiency, mobility, maneuverability of vehicles with a different number of the dry wheels, from uh, four wheels to 16 wheels. So depending on the number of wheel steering systems, so the behavior of the vehicle is different, mobility is different, terrain mobility, first of all, and um, uh, maneuverability and energy efficiency. I, I've been serving the, as the editor-in-chief for the past four years. Before that, I served as the editor of the journal, and uh, for a couple of decades, I believe I'm a member of the society somewhere in, uh, cannot recall, probably, yeah, probably about 15 years or so. Um, uh, uh, you see, I was uh, organizing conferences and sessions at the ISTVS conferences and enjoying this small society where uh, practically we know each other all. 
and we collaborate all uh, in publications, uh, collaborating with research topics. And very happy um, that we organize this first event to explain you how we actually work in the Journal of Terra Mechanics. And this probably would be very interesting for our potential authors who didn't submit their publications to us yet. First of all, when, we, when you submit your paper to the journal, this paper comes either to Dr. Gorsuch or to myself. Or myself. Um, if I may say this, we are the first filters and we just estimate um, uh, the submission from different perspectives. First of all, if it goes along with the scope or not. And unfortunately, many initial submissions which come to us, they are out of the scope of the journal. Uh, so please, when you submit a paper, read carefully what we actually, um, uh, what kind of research we include in, in the, into the terms and areas of terra mechanics and off-road mobilities before you submit a paper. And we will be talking about this a little bit later today. So another reason, big reason, uh, why we uh, do not accept papers for the further consideration is those papers, they are written as the good conference papers, but not journal level papers. And in this case, uh, when we reject them, we always uh, encourage the authors to work with us offline, ask any questions if they have, and we help them to upgrade the paper to the level of the journal requirements and resubmit the paper. Uh, uh, this is typically uh, main two reasons for, uh, reduct, uh, for, uh, for not accepting papers for further consideration. If those papers, they go through us, uh, Dr. Gorsuch and myself successfully, then we split the papers between all of us and we arrange in the review process. We try to get two, three um, independent reviews on each paper. And then we work with the authors. Um, uh, if uh, reviewers recommend the authors to revise, to revise the paper or upgrade this, provide additional material, and so on and so forth. Uh, you will see from the metrics of the journal a little bit later uh, how we're doing in terms of the time frame and uh, what are the uh, options to uh, improve our performance. But at this moment, uh, uh, I would like to go to the next slide and introduce the advisory board of the journal. Currently, we have uh, 13 active members uh, of the uh, board. Uh, you see the names over here. Uh, I suggest we go to the next slide first, and then we'll come back to this slide. So I would like to introduce responsibilities. Those um, uh, members of the editorial board, they, what they do, how they work with us, and how they help us to maintain and move forward our journal. First of all, they advise us on strategic directions. And they actually, in fact, are representative of our journal, and they are ambassadors of the journal. They try to promote us everywhere around the world on technical conferences, other technical events. They invite new authors. They try to help us with reviewers. Reviewing our days is a big, big problem. And uh, to get uh, two, three reviews on paper sometimes is very difficult. And uh, we need uh, very much qualified reviewers to do this work, and that is why uh, we usually invite up to five reviewers, and then we work with them see uh, what kind of um, paper we have uh, in front of us based on the several reviews. Uh, they help us with reviewing manuscripts if they go to the areas. And uh, they recommend new editors to the journal. Uh, very much uh, uh, I appreciate help of uh, this good board when they advise us um, on uh, duplication of submissions. Let's say I, I got a submission and all of a sudden I, say, I, I think, I probably saw there's some kind of similar publication somewhere in 1970s, right, or 80s. And um, again, I calibrate my opinion with uh, opinion of the advisory board 
and they help us in those um, sometimes difficult situation to understand to which way we have to run a particular submission. They help us with special issues as the guest editors, and they also uh, write invite papers to Journal of Term Mechanics. With this, I would like to go to the previous slide, please, and uh, you see the list. And I believe the very first one, um, I don't know if we have uh, uh, Dr. Fermers from Germany. Uh, is he with us? No, probably no. Dr. Gorsuch already introduced uh, himself. Dr. Jay Kumar, he is busy with the NATO event at this moment as we speak. He sent me an email that he is not able to attend our uh, digital event today. So Dr. Uh, Alex Keen, I believe he is with us. Uh, Alex, please go ahead, introduce yourself and uh, talk a little bit about your role in the society in journal. Yeah, hello, uh, it's Alex Keen. Um, I think I've got the mic working, but you, the, uh, the visual doesn't, isn't coming up. So um, I'll carry on and talk through if that's okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Good. You can hear me okay, Vladimir? Yes, yes. We can okay, good. Well. That, that bit's working. Right, I'm the ISTVS UK Secretary. Uh, and if you could see me, you'd realize I'm now retired. I was previously a senior lecturer at Harper Adams University for 23 years. My uh, introduction to term mechanics uh, was as an undergraduate in the early 1970s at Newcastle University under Dr. Alan Rees and uh, Dr. Uh, Daniel Hatterarch. And if you remember from the first slide, uh, Dr. Alan Rees was the second ISTV Yes, president, and he was the first editor of uh, Journal of Terra Mechanics. Uh, and Daniel Hatcharach, he was also an assistant uh, uh, editor at the start. Um, research areas in Terra Mechanics have included traction, tractor efficiency, and tractor performance more generally, the effects of suspensions on traction performance, including tire modeling and large wheel testing, and more generally, um, land management of agricultural soft clay. Uh, student supervision has covered a wide range of off-road vehicle design problems, often for industrial sponsors, uh, and these have ranged from off-road motorcycles, uh, uh, all-terrain uh, vehicles, tractors, and military uh, vehicles, including tanks. Uh, and has included modeling uh, software such as FEA and uh, more lately, just before I finished car sim. I first attended uh, UK ISTVS meetings organized by Professor Dave Crawler in the early 1990s. I organized 2003 ISTVS conference at Harper Adams, and I'm presently involved in developing the ISTVS research, uh, resource initiative web area and to a lesser extent these digital events. Uh, years of service to the journal. Um, I was involved in editing the chosen papers from the 2003 conference for a special uh, issue and I've been a reviewer for the last two decades. More, more recently I've concentrated on terra mechanics and climate change uh, and there's more detail available uh, in my Canada conference paper and the first digital terabyte uh, uh, lecture of this series. Uh, that probably is a, a brief intro, uh, Vladimir, if you'd like to carry on. If you have something else to say, but go no, ahead. No, I think that, that's a sort of just okay. my sort of brief summary. Um, yes. I, I can see you've got all the people who uh, are waiting to come on. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. And uh, I really encourage all attendees of today's meeting to contact Alex offline because what he is doing with the society, with his, uh, uh, you know, uh, reference sources uh, is very important. And uh, you, I believe you will be enjoying the material he posted over there. And who knows, probably you would like to participate in his activities too. If I may so say this, Alex. All right, thank you, Vladimir. Thank you. So uh, next is uh, Dr. Peter Kish, please. You're on mute, Peter. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Vladimir. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. You Hello, everybody. My name is Peter Kish. Uh, I am from Hungary. I am a professor uh, at the University of uh, Agriculture and Life Sciences in uh, Gödöllő, near to, to Budapest. My professional field uh, at the university is uh, internal combustion engine, on-road and uh, off-road uh, vehicles, uh, soil-tire interaction, off-road vehicle, energetics and efficiency. I joined to the uh, society in 1991 and I took part uh, organizing ISTVS conferencing, conferences at the first with Professor Light, who, who is uh, my colleagues uh, at the university. Uh, these conferences, ISTVS conferences, was in 1991, 2006 and, uh, and uh, 2017. Uh, I am, at, at the moment, I am the secretary of, uh, uh, of Hungary and I am a, a member of an advisory board of the journal. I was uh, second vice president, uh, first vice president, and then president of the society between 2013 and 2017. Uh, I am very uh, happy to be here and uh, to see you, and, uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, Peter, as the, editor, as the advisory board member, participated uh, in uh, several special issues, I believe, as a guest editor, too. And thank you very much for your help with that, Peter, too. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, next on our list is Professor Lal Kushwaha. If he's here, I'm not sure. Probably no. Uh, Professor Nakashima is not here. Dr. Carol Plaffy. Not here. And uh, Dr. Lutz Richter? No. Uh, uh, Dr. Karina Sandu already spoke to us. If, Karina, you want to add something else about your research and activities with the journal, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Um, <clears throat> I'm a professor at Virginia Tech. Um, I lead a laboratory uh, entitled Terra Mechanics Multibody and Vehicle Systems. Uh, and um, I have been involved with the journal as an editor uh, from 2007 to 2015. Um, and then I, um, I became an editorial board member in 2015. Um, I organized the ISTVS um, conference in 2011. Uh, that was an anniversary edition for us, uh, 50 years for the society. And um, I uh, started uh, as president of the society uh, in uh, 2020. So my term uh, continues right now. Um, it's a three year term. And I think this is, uh, this is all for me. I'm happy to, to serve the journal and the society in any capacity I can. Thank you. Thank you much, Karina. Uh, Dr. Sally Shoup, I believe Sally is here. Hi, yes, and for some reason my computer won't let me turn the camera on today, but I'm sorry I, you can't see me, but it's good to see all of you. Um, I've been a member of ISTVS since 1987, and I participated and, of course, helped organize on the organizing committee of many conferences. I was served as president, so I'm past president of ISTVS. I was deputy general secretary of the Americas for about 10 years. Um, I served as editor of the Journal of Terra Mechanics from 1997 to 2008, and then on the editorial board since then, and guest editor for three special issues. So a long history with the journal and the organization. Um, my area of specialties, obviously, is vehicle <coughs> mobility and, and terra mechanics. I recently retired after 35 years at the Cold Regions Research and engineering laboratory, which is part of ERDIC now. And my specialty is vehicle mobility and seasonal impacts on the terrain and how that impacts mobility. So uh, freezing thawing of ground and uh, vehicles on snow and ice and including air vehicles operations on those same surfaces for austere entry or austere runways. Um, thank you. 
by Sally, and uh, we were not allowing to retire you from the journal. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for all your help and support to the journal. Um, uh, another two gentlemen, Ivan uh, Westerland and uh, Dr. Joe Wong, I believe they are not here. I receive a note from Dr. Wong that he is engaged in some other events at this time, and he is not able, was not able to attend us. Um, this is the now. I believe the audience better understands the role of the advisory board and uh, how we collaborate with the editors, and how we all work together to further improve uh, the journal. And the next item in our agenda is just metrics for the journal, where we are currently. And I believe this would be very important for you to uh, to see this and uh, see which direction we go. Uh, please go to the next slide. One more, one more, please. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, just take a look at the uh, three columns in the uh, frame improvement. This is for 2021, and I can quickly explain you the uh, idea of these graphics. Uh, the numbers here, 2.5, 13.5, and 21.6, this is the number of weeks, average number of weeks. Orange color, 2.5 weeks, it requires for a submission uh, to get through the editors in chief. It means you submit the paper to the journal. First of all, you work with the publisher. The publisher uh, takes a look if you submitted everything in the right way. All the figures, pictures, uh, and graphics, they're good. Uh, they go with the, along with the requirements. Sometimes they respond to you to resubmit a couple of figures and so on and so forth. So this time, which uh, needed for you as the author to work with the publisher also sits in this 2.5 weeks. Then when, submit, when the publisher admit your submission by formal categories, the number of pages, the font, the figures and everything, then submissions comes to the editors in chief. And it takes us a while to understand uh, the paper, uh, to make our decision and then after an average 2.5 weeks, your paper goes to the editors. And the editors arrange the review process. And uh, sometimes there's uh, not one review, but uh, several reviews cycles. Let's say uh, we got three reviews. Three reviews, they say the paper should be revised. You revise the paper, you submit a, re a revised edition of your paper, and again, the editors send your paper to the same reviewers. The same reviewers evaluate your paper and get back to the editor saying, now it's good, it's ready for publication. And it takes an average 13.5 weeks. And finally, it goes to the production and you work with the publisher and uh, after 21 weeks, uh, you see your paper published in paper, but very, um, uh, but it doesn't mean that the, the readers, the consumers of our journal, they cannot see your paper before. Your paper will be published electronically, and those who have access to the journal can download your paper and start reading it before your paper goes in paper, in the paper edition of the journal. Uh, uh, as you can see from all these years, from 2017 to 2021, we definitely made some improvements. And it, and, uh, it all, not only because editors, all of us, we started uh, working better. No, we changed the system. We work a lot with the publisher. We improve the journal tool, tool for submitting your papers, for submitting reviewers, for uh, searching reviewers, and so on and so forth. It's a lot of work behind the scene, what editors they do on practically daily basis. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> this metric, I believe it's very important to know. As you can see steadily, beginning since uh, 2007, uh, 2016, we gradually uh, improved the impact factor of our journal. 
And today, um, calculated for 2020, actually, the impact factor is 2.446. It's pretty good number. It's uh, higher than uh, average number of ASME journals. It definitely higher than um, uh, impact factor of uh, SAE journals. So for our small society, uh, we're doing, I believe, very good. And I am very happy to have this editor's board as a, as a team. We work together uh, in different directions to further improve uh, impact factor. And quality of the paper is number one, and uh, it belongs to the authors, of course, uh, for sure. In the next slide, you can see the rejections and acceptance level. The acceptance rate is about 35%. It's pretty common uh, for all uh, high rank journals. They accept papers approximately between 25 and 35% uh, or something like this. Uh, you see also uh, in orange, orange color, the papers which were review which were rejected at desk it means editors in chief rejected those papers it's about 28 percent of papers they were um, uh, rejected at desk and then when they go through the standard re review again some other papers they get uh, rejected and uh, you now you have um, uh, this data you can imagine um, again, how much work behind the scene editors should do to provide this high quality publications in the journal and to let you enjoy the reading new papers. Next slide, please. Uh, special issues is a very important direction for the journal. You can see uh, beginning from 2017, uh, I will put here the uh, list of the special issues, and I name some of them. Manned, unmanned ground vehicles, off-road dynamics and mobility. So special issue on that topic. Then agricultural and forestry machi machinery. Terra vehicles, uh, mobility uh, of those terra vehicles. Real-time applications of terra mechanics. It's a very important topic for model-based control applications. That is why we initiated this uh, topic, real-time applications, and published a special issue. Uh, our colleagues from Japan, they published modeling, visualization, and verification in terra mechanics. And uh, finally, this year, 2021, um, artificial intelligence application to terra mechanics. And recently, we published a special section, not special issue, but special section in a regular issue uh, with best papers on 2019 uh, conference, um, which was uh, held in Prague. Uh, with four papers. That is why only four papers, they were uh, um, recognized as the best papers at the conference. So the authors, they worked on those papers. They upgraded those conference papers to the uh, journal requirements. The papers, they were reviewed. And after reviewing the papers, they, they were published. Next slide, please. Uh, you can see here in this table, uh, the uh, top 10 article which are most cited in 2021 uh, within the frame of the last uh, uh, two years, 2019, 2020, 2021. You can see uh, the paper, in, the very first paper published in 2019 is a paper which uh, got uh, uh, 20 citations for the past two years. And uh, uh, you see uh, how the citations, it's spread it between the uh, different publications. And you can see what kind of uh, papers they are most cited. It means you might want to read that paper and download this paper too. If you want to have this slides, I believe we will post those slides after 
uh, our event at the digital event uh, library or uh, our ISTVS team can work with you and provide you the title of those slides and uh, the authors. You can download the slides, the papers from the journal website. Next slide, please. Uh, you see, this is the top articles uh, most downloaded. As you can see, the very first article published in 2021 already gained almost 1,300 uh, downloads. Paper was published in this year. Definitely, the high level of downloads, it allows us uh, to make some kind of estimation of the quality of publications, see the most important directions uh, in research and engineering related to terra mechanics and off-road mobility, and invite people to submit articles in that uh, directions and further improve the quality of the journal. And talking about the quality of publications, uh, on next slide, Next slide, please. Yeah. We present five items which would allow you uh, to take an objective look on your paper before you submit it. So we are continually working on improving the quality of publications. And uh, we would like uh, the authors to satisfy at least one of the following criteria uh, before they submit uh, the public uh, the paper to to the journal let's say you do work in some kind of completely novel innovative research direction and you did not do your experimental research here this is emerging area but your analytical research is very deep very novel so you can definitely submit your paper in this emerging area of research. Let's say you are doing research on a robot which is moving in the ground, in soil, inside of the soil. It's a new area which is just emerging and if you have a good solid um, material, analytical material on this uh, uh, topic, so go ahead and submit the paper. Uh, number two is deep analytical research and engineering work. When you do not only research, but you extend your research to the development area, and you do some work on engineering side, and you show how the how terra mechanics is uh, uh, is uh, used in your engineering work, and how you use the foundation of terra mechanics to improve vehicle design. Number three is. Uh, this is analytical, new analytical and experimental research and engineering work. So I would say number three is, if I may say this, this is like some kind of mini PhD, PhD thesis. Um, as the any thesis, you have uh, motivation, analysis of previous publications, you formulate the goal, the objectives of your study, then you do analytical work, uh, novel analytical work, and you have some uh, experimental data to verify and validate your work. So this is some kind of level of um, publication we're expecting in this item number three. Novel experimental research, new methods, technique, advanced test tricks, and all other what you see in item number four. Hybrid simulations, when you have hardware in the loop, software in the loop, uh, with human in the loop. And on top of this, if you are doing off-road uh, autonomous vehicles with a human on the loop, on the, not in the loop, on the loop, is also a very important new topic, what we would like to consider. But again, it's not topic on um, autonomous vehicle itself. It's all topic related to terra mechanics and terra mechanics as a part of your autonomous vehicle modeling, simulation, design, and so on. We will be talking about this later too. And finally, number five is the uh, analysis or review of the state of the art. We welcome 
those papers when you are an expert uh, in a particular area and you can present a good paper which gives us a survey overview in a particular research area and we will be happy to publish this paper with you. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I believe this is the time to talk about the Journal of Thermomechanics scope and APE up, eight, uh, update. Uh, I would say for the past uh, several years, we discuss this with editors um, practically on a weekly basis, especially we, uh, when we are analyzing some submissions to see if they go along with the scope of the journal or we have to expand the scope uh, to that area. And these four items, they put uh, major, main reasons why we actually updated the scope. We want to advance the research area to new areas in terra mechanics, off-road vehicle dynamics, and terrain mobility. Number two, and we say this very explicitly, we want to see how the terra mechanics is applied to vehicle and vehicle subsystem design. Next one is AI and intelligent controls. How it works all together for off-road vehicles for different applications. And again, it's not AI itself, it's application of AI to particular areas of off-road mobility. And finally, who are the authors, customers, and users of our journal? We want to say this very clear in our scope and aim. Please go ahead with the next slide. <clears throat> so the Journal of Terra Mechanics, uh, it deals with Terra Mechanics, off-road vehicle dynamics. And let me emphasize off-road vehicle dynamics. This is the very first time when off-road dynamics has been explicitly included into the scope of the journal. We never said this before, but now vehicle dynamics, off-road vehicle dynamics is, is here. Uh, for um, Eastern uh, Europe uh, countries, um, I see representatives from Russia, Russian Federation and others. Um, uh, you probably know this, but I would like to emphasize uh, vehicle dynamics is an equivalent term to theory of automobile. Uh, theory of automobile in Russia is uh, vehicle dynamics. So again, off-road uh, vehicle dynamics now explicitly uh, part of the scope of our journal. And how this contribute off-road dynamics and terra mechanics, how they contribute to research and engineering manned and unmanned vehicles, off-road robots, and various types of machinery, construction machinery, uh, forestry machinery, farm tractors, which operate on soil, terrain, subterrain, in different environments, mediums. Uh, let's say uh, uh, amphibious vehicles. It also can be a part of our publications. You can submit a, a, a amphibious vehicle, uh, terra mechanics, how those wheels or tracks interact with the bottom of the sea when the vehicle is getting out of the water. So next slide, please. So we consider our journal as the international platform for technical discussions and uh, knowledge dissemination and transfer facilitation around the world. And I believe today's meeting is a good confirmation for our intent to do that. And we work with uh, industries, academia, research agencies, and with a small business and startup companies. So again, we explicitly say this in our um, scope and we want to make clear that those authors, potential authors from those uh, um, areas of uh, activities, research and engineering, are very welcome to submit papers. Next slide, please. We equally uh, treat ISTVS members and non-members. Non-members, not 
don't need to pay any special fee when they submit papers and so on and so forth. You can submit a paper to our journal even if you are not a member. Uh, currently, we're working with the publisher uh, trying to include into the journal tool an option when the submitter who submit a paper would select uh, he or she is a member of the society or non-member of the society. This is not for any other purposes, just to keep track how many papers we have from the society itself. And again, a uh, very important uh, um, uh, item I want to bring here for our discussion. We talk about application of terra mechanics and off-road vehicle dynamics to vehicle design, testing, and utilization. What it means? It means in your publication, you should always have terra mechanics and uh, off-road dynamics presented when you talk about designing any vehicle system. Uh, we do not accept papers, let's say, on how to design well, a valve for the hydro transmission, hydraulic, hydrostatic transmission of a vehicle, even this vehicle is off-road vehicle. However, if you are designing hydrostatic transmission based on terra mechanics foundation, based on the locomotion and terrain interaction, this is a completely different story. So again, um, when you talk about transmission design, suspension design, and it does not relate to terra mechanics, so you have to submit your paper to a regular vehicle engineering journal. If Terra Mechanics is in place, so this is our paper for the Journal of Terra Mechanics. And uh, uh, next slide, several slides, they talk about future directions. First of all, new areas in Terra Mechanics, off-road dynamics and terrain mobility. And we put this in uh, bold um, uh, font, physics-based approaches and methods, reduced order terrain models. Why it's important, reduced order uh, models, because we're talking about real-time control. We're talking about AI applications. So we definitely need to get into that area. Uh, we talk about uh, environmental impacts on Terra Mechanics. And Dr. Alex Keen, he made his presentation recently in this uh, event, digital event on that topic. This is very important again for us. Uncertainty quantification. Definitely, this is the area. Terrain is a very stochastic terrain. So how to simulate this interaction, stochastic interaction between the vehicle and terrain. Model and simulation and assessment of terrain mobility, including self-assessment by autonomous vehicles. This is very important, very new direction for, uh, for our journal. Next slide, please. New areas in off-road vehicle dynamics. And as example, we listed several of them there here, agile tire slippage dynamics, impact of couple and interactive dynamics of vehicle subsystems on vehicle mobility and so on and so forth. Modeling and simulation of complex vehicle terrain interactions using back of work models and others. Testing equipment and facility is a special issue, especially when we go to autonomous vehicles, uh, we need facility for hybrid simulations of those vehicles. So definitely we would be happy to publish those papers too. Next slide, please. It shows you off-road vehicle and vehicle subsystems applications, new direction, right? So what kind of um, vehicles we cover, what kind of level of autonomy, any type, any level of autonomy can be included. Robotic planetary rovers, subterrain, underground vehicles, amphibious vehicles, I already mentioned. Next slide, please. Again, I would like to emphasize and make it very clear. We accept papers on powertrain, subsystem, and components design, but we do this only if it's uh, based on Terra Mechanics Foundation. Uh, and also we take uh, um, papers on subsystems related to motion planning, estimation, intelligent controls, 
But again, when it goes along with the terra mechanics, with terrain modeling and simulation. Uh, and the last slide, I would like to invite uh, Raymond um, Gonzalez to introduce um, application of AI and controls, what we again uh, consider as a very new direction for our journal. Go ahead, Raymond. Thank you, thank you, Vladimir. So um, I would like to say that uh, from the of Thermal Mechanics, we want to push uh, uh, papers considering artificial intelligence, but considering artificial intelligence in order to improve the mobility of the vehicle, not just using artificial intelligence, but also for improving the mobility of the vehicle. Uh, as you can see in this image, this is a very good example. So we can use artificial intelligence in order to improve, in, in this case, in order to try to remove this planetary exploration rover from this very, uh, from this embedding event. So this is the main goal that we want to uh, uh, show here. We want papers using artificial intelligence, but using artificial intelligence in order to improve the mobility of the vehicle. Uh, we can consider different approaches to applying artificial intelligence, like using exteroceptive and proteoceptive sensors in order to identify the terrain, in order to run, to run uh, terrain classification. Also, uh, terrain characterization. We can use artificial intelligence in order to estimate properties of the terrain, sinkage, slippage, Etc. Uh, we also want to use artificial intelligence uh, for route planning. What is the, the, the path, what is the route that the vehicle should follow in order to avoid dangerous uh, situations related to the terrain, uh, high slippage events, uh, sandy terrains, uh, sand ripples, etc. We also want to consider artificial intelligence in order to improve the navigation of the vehicle, the autonomous navigation of the vehicle, considering properties of the terrain, etc. And, um, um, and yeah, also uh, considering artificial intelligence in order to avoid terrain vehicle hazards, not, not only related to geometrical objects, but also non-geometrical objects, like the condition of the terrain, etc. Um, and finally, we want to consider all kind of autonomous vehicle and mobile robots, like planetary exploration robots, uh, agricultural uh, vehicles, um, all kind of vehicles uh, really with subterrain, underwater conditions, etc. Thank you, Vladimir. Um, uh, I also now at this moment I would like to um, ask and request uh, editorial editors and editorial advisory board members to get into this discussion if uh, I miss something in our presentation what we put together so please go ahead and um, uh, add what I missed or what you whatever you want to add to this discussion on the scope new directions and uh, what we're just talking about. Please go ahead. I don't want to name anyone, but uh, if any editor want to add something, please, please. Hi, Vladimir. This is Hi. Ramon. Hi. Um, yes. So, uh, I would like to encourage uh, the audience to, uh, to send us papers from, not only from academia, but also from enterprises, from private companies, from startups, for small companies. Because these companies will bring us a different view of a problem, a different view of the application of, uh, you know, modeling, application of technology to the real world, because companies are very close to the final user of a product. So we really uh, welcome um, papers from, from companies, not only from academia, but from companies, from startups, 
for uh, small companies because they are very close to their final user. They, are, they have a very practical mindset. So we really appreciate papers from, from this um, a kind of audience. Thank you very much, Raymond. I, I would like to echo what you just said, uh, and I believe I mentioned a little bit about this. Uh, we're talking not only about uh, research, uh, basic or applied research, we're talking about development, different, different level of engineering, different level of technology readiness. Uh, this is what is very important uh, to demonstrate the applicability of Terra Mechanics to off-road vehicle design. And when we publish papers on the designing, uh, designing of vehicle, engineering of vehicles, utilization of vehicle, it's uh, very important uh, to bring this, as Raymond uh, pointed, the real world engineering to the journal and to help our students who write papers as a PhD students or master students to understand that the uh, publication of their research is not the final, final point for their, uh, you know, activities, professional activities. They should go further and bring those, um, you know, advances of Terra Mechanics to real world engineering. This would be very much appreciated if we go to that direction. Again, not only research, but also engineering and uh, prototyping and different level of technology readiness um, papers. Thank you very much. Uh, if there are no other uh, words from uh, our ed editors, uh, I would like to go to the next slide, which is actually open uh, um, question and answer session, Q&A session, and uh, ask audience uh, to ask any of us uh, editors or uh, members of the editorial advisory board uh, any questions you might want or might have. And I ask you to put the very last slide when you, you, you show the pictures of the editors with the names. Andreas, can you put the very last slide? So the audience can see the names and uh, ask any member of the editorial board any questions. So uh, who is uh, managing the questions? Please help us. Hello, Dr. Monsevich. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any questions directly in the Q&A tab yet, but uh, we would like to request anyone who has questions to please join the discussion using the blue color share audio and video button so that we can add you to the live discussion and uh, have your question as a live question answer. Yeah, thank you very much, Mahi. Vladimir, uh, while we're waiting for questions, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a new functionality in the review system where people can nominate themselves as reviewers. And as the editor of the journal, uh, our biggest problem is actually to find suitable reviewers. Uh, it's people who papers and to give us good reviews in, in time. So if, if you are interested, the journal, uh, we would also appreciate you to either join on that online platform or send one of us uh, a message so that we at least know about you uh, and we uh, appreciate uh, people who want to review for the journal. It's a very important part of the uh, society and the journal that we get good reviews and um, good reviewers. So if you haven't reviewed for the journal yet and you are willing to do so, uh, please let us know so that we uh, know about you. Thank you very much, Kalk. You just raised a very important um, issue, what we're just dealing on practically daily basis, um, to find uh, good reviewers. As um, uh, Professor Skalk said, please uh, self-nominate yourself if you want to uh, serve as a reviewer for the journal. Send us your brief information about your professional activities, your status, where you are, what you're doing. And also, I encourage you, uh, uh, authors of the papers which were accepted for publications also serve as the reviewers uh, for our journal. 
Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Yes, we do have a question in the Q&A tab. So firstly, uh, an anonymous question of how are articles assigned to the specific editors? Uh, I believe I mentioned this, and again, I will uh, tell you this again. And uh, any uh, editor, please uh, jump in and uh, uh, say, say whatever you want to say regarding to this question. Uh, first of all, uh, your submission, your paper comes to the editors in chief, to Dr. Gorsuch and myself. And then when it paper uh, was, let's say we decide to send this paper to an editor, to one of the editors, we definitely see to which area of expertise this paper goes to. And you were listening today, all editors, and they presented themselves, their research, their area of expertise. So based on this, we definitely uh, uh, spread the papers between them related to their particular expertise and work with in the journal. I hope this uh, gives you some understanding how it works. And any editor, please uh, jump in and uh, add to what I just said. Um, I hope I answer this question, but again, if there are any follow-ups, please let me know. Hey, Vladimir, um, I, I just want to make a comment about the question about finding reviewers, and I know that's always a challenge. Um, one thing I've looked to is, you know, who even outside of academia is really cares about the off-road mobility problem? And uh, unfortunately, some of the people I worked with, for example, at John Deere and Caterpillar have retired. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, there's new people there that, you know, maybe aren't as engaged as the past people were. So I just encourage people, if you can see who's getting funded, who's working on these kind of problems that are out there, they may be an in industry, not just in academia. Um, I mean, I've just encountered like a new interest at General Motors where they're really looking at the off-road problem and they're digging through our material. So any folks that are in that kind of um, light are excellent potential new people to be reviewers of papers. So I just make that suggestion because I've, I've also run into that problem. And I'm a little fortunate in that I can see where some people are getting funded. Um, so at least from that perspective, if I know we're funding them to do off-road mobility problems, then maybe they're willing to be a reviewer as well. Um, but I suspect, um, like since I also chair the U.S. Uh, uh, and I'm the U.S. voting member for the Advanced Vehicle Technology Group under NATO, uh, uh, many of the NATO governments are concerned about the off-road mobility problem. And so I suspect the representatives on the government side for those countries also are concerned about uh, these kind of challenges. And there's probably people that uh, may not have been traditionally involved in reviewing papers, may not be in the database where you go through and say, okay, can I find a reviewer? So you have to add them as new reviewers. So uh, that's just my comment to that, but it is definitely a, a challenge. Over. Thank you very much, David. This is a really challenge, as you said. Uh, what uh, as a follow-up with all this, I would suggest uh, uh, we will update the journal flyer and circulate it to AVT 341 group and see if those people would be interested to serve as viewers or submit papers and, and so on and so forth. This is a great suggestion, and I believe uh, we need to follow up with uh, some kind of practical action. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another question in the Q&A tab is like it's a follow up. So thanks a lot for your effort and I appreciate your work in this unique journal, especially for off-road vehicles and terra mechanics. My question is why the impact factor of the journal is low and what can we help as an ISTVS member to increase the impact factor? Uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, as I said, and you saw from the graph, uh, for the past four years, uh, the uh, impact factor drastically uh, went up. It was, uh, I believe, 1.1 or something like this, uh, and uh, nowadays is uh, 2.466. Uh, 
it's it's a good for uh, it's a good impact factor for mechanical engineering journals. Uh, uh, I did this analysis and I know, analyzed this impact factor compared to the um, uh, impact factor of ASME journals. ASME it stands for American Vehicle, American Society for Mechanical Engineering. So they have uh, less than two and uh, 2.1, 2.2. And we are, um, we are some kind of a special journal or special society. We are a very small society. It's about 150 members in our society in total. I compare with the IEEE journal or IEEE society when they have millions of members, if I may say this, right? And you can imagine how many papers and what kind of competitions they can arrange between the papers to publish. And that is why, again, uh, we are in a different um, category. We are some kind of, uh, if I may say this, lightweight uh, person participating in a heavy person, uh, you know, competition, okay, or trying to fight with a heavy person or something like this. So even with that, I believe we're trying to do our best to improve the impact factor. First of all, by watching the quality of submission. Quality, quality, and one more time quality. This is uh, number one I consider as a way to improve the impact factor and further improve the impact factor. And we do this on daily basis when we analyze publications and we invite new authors and we try to promote the journal and so on. Another point is citations. You can imagine how many citations uh, IEEE papers they gather. And with a society of 150 members, how many citations you can get to your paper published in our journal. That is why promotion of this journal among all other areas is very important. So that is why it's very important to bring our journal to any conference related to vehicles. Off-road, on-road vehicles too. Who knows, probably they would be interested. So that is why it's very important everything what our advisory board does promoting our journal everywhere. As I said, they are our ambassadors. And this is what we need to do to further improve the impact factor. And last point I would like to mention, sometimes imp impact factor is not the final, final criteria what you uh, consider when you publish your paper. It's very important the readers, who is the audience, who is the consumer of your information. So to what area, to what the people you want to reach publishing your paper in this journal. And in this term, in this sense, our Journal of Terra Mechanics is a unique journal. I believe it's the only one in the world which content concentrates on off-road mobility of vehicles, on Terra Mechanics as a science and engineering. Um, if I miss something else, I ask uh, uh, all other editors, please jump in and add. Thank you. No, Vladimir, I think you hit it, uh, the key points. Uh, I mean, the fact is this is a very specialized area, but it is the journal for that area in off-road mobility. So so anyone that's really interested in, in that space, uh, this is the place to go. So, But of course, IEEE Journal and Reliability, it's a huge area, right? It covers uh, many different systems and different fields and areas. So uh, that would have a higher impact factor. So that's just the reality. But I would say you've seen the, the, the numbers uh, going up, as Vladimir said, and that's partly because of how we've managed the journal. But it's because you know this area of autonomous systems uh there's there's renewed interest in an in understanding of the mobility problem uh with the ground vehicles becoming more complex and that's not just from the military side but from the commercial industry side so i think there's more and more people interested in this off-road mobility problem given the vehicles becoming more complex so you saw future directions the slide that vladimir showed I think that's going to drive the the impact number up continually over the next few years, even if the, the editorial board and the editors did nothing. 
and I, I also see that uh, there's a real um, interest, at least on the U.S. side, in off-roading. It's called off-roading, right? But off-road mobility. I, there has been a, like some events like Detroit Four Fest where I think we really should advertise ISTVS and the Journal of Terra Mechanics at these events, where people are just really interested in, you know, how do you control torque at the wheel and how do you get these vehicles to go up and down very difficult terrains. Uh, there's an event coming up in January in the United States called King of the Hammer. Uh, it, it's amazing the public interest in these spaces. And I mean, it's just almost out of pure fun and interest in, in vehicle design and how you make a mobile off road. Uh, and I think those are great avenues for the editorial board to say, hey, look at uh, let's advertise our space because we are the real scientists and engineers in this space. And uh, this publication is where uh, people can publish uh, their ideas and results. But uh, th there's a growing interest in, and I, I've talked to some of the people that organize the, ev the events and they see a real uh, uptick in them. Um, and it's not, like I said, not just the military, but you know, Jeep and Bronco were huge sponsors of this event, uh, selling like Rubicons and took me on a ride on Rubicon off road and just going up and down very difficult uh, terrains do and and there's a lot of public excitement in that so so i think in general um we're going to see uptrends in, in the impact factor uh just based, based on what's going on in the community but we do need to make sure people know about the journal and we get uh, the word out there that this is the specific area of off-road mobility thanks vladimir i just wanted to add that thank you very much david thank you so next question okay. Yeah, so we do not have any more questions in the Q&A time. But before we head for the closing, uh, I would like to I would like to invite Dr. Van Savage and then all the editorial board members, editorial team and the editorial board members to uh, share a few closing thoughts before we move to the actual closing. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, please edit us. Uh... Uh, we start with Dr. Skalk Elk Els. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. As I mentioned in my own introduction, I've published many papers in the journal, and I can uh, tell you that those papers are very well read and highly cited. And those citations are what makes up the impact factor of the journal. So the more people read your paper and cite your paper, the better the impact factor of the journal. And Terra Mechanics is definitely one of the Good, very good. Out there. So I would like everybody to uh, encourage everybody to uh, send your good work, your follow new work, um, and we will treat it uh, as as precious uh, cargo and help you to get it published. Thank you. Thank you, Skalk. Um, go ahead, Raymond, please. Well, so I would like to say that uh, I completely agree with you, Vladimir, and with David about the, the one of the main uh, points about the journal is the quality. Uh, we should, uh, you know, publish uh, uh, papers with a very good quality. And um, I also uh, encourage uh, the audience and, and people in general to send us papers uh, related to trending technologies that we have nowadays, like artificial intelligence, uh, like uh, autonomous uh, mobility, uh, computer simulation, etc. This will help us to bring new people, to bring young researchers, uh, young uh, people from the, uh, not only from academia, but from also from companies. I truly believe that uh, bringing to the journal uh, papers uh, uh, dealing with uh, companies, with startups, with small companies, will help us a lot, will give us a, a different uh, standpoint um, um, uh, than to uh, the point of view of academia. And this is also very good because we will have different views, uh, different, uh, um, you know, practical uh, situations, uh, etc. And this will, at the end of the day, will improve and will, you know, uh, bring more uh, experience, more background, and, and I think that will grow and the uh, Torah mechanic community, um, you know, in, in the coming uh, months, in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Tom, uh, you're still here, right? 
Dr. Tom Wei. No, I don't see him. Uh, Dr. Mihari Tekesti, please. Uh, Mihari, join us in progress, please. Go ahead. Yes, this is uh, Mihari. Uh, thank you very much from Iowa State University. I think uh, looking at the number of citations, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, even though the impact factor might be low with other journals, uh, the continuous increasing in citation, and there's a lot of need from at least industry too, uh, since I uh, work with uh, uh, quite a few of them. Uh, they're trying to do a lot of automation and the, uh, the ground interaction with the vehicle is, uh, is a key to the, uh, uh, a lot of the new advances in machine systems. So the, the journal uh, has a lot of opportunity in the future, especially with uh, modeling and simulation. And the continuous citation of our work uh, is, a, is a good uh, reflection of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mikhari. And uh, Jody, you're here, right? Yeah. I'm Sarah Vladimir. Thank you. Uh, so, <clears throat> again, I, I, I think it's been stated, but you know, we have a very unique journal and society here uh, with relevance to military, agriculture, and construction areas. Uh, and I think you know one of the big things for the journal and, and going forward is obviously going to be getting into unmanned aspects and autonomy aspects associated with that in those different areas of application. Uh, and I just encourage. Uh, readers of the journal and participants with the society to reach out to folks in those different areas that you collaborate with and make sure that you encourage folks to consider this journal as a a, a really unique area to get into kind of a key aspect of, of the vehicle train interaction uh, uh, specifically and, and some folks may be working in other areas and, and uh, more characteristically participating in other journals and societies and not realize that they, they could have a, a unique fit to this one as well. So just encourage that and I appreciate uh, the opportunity today and, and what, what all is going on with the journal. And like I said, excited to see where things go in the future with it. Thank you. David, you want to say something else uh, to do what you just said as the closing remarks? Uh, Rodimir? Yes. Uh, can I? Hello? Who is this? Ah, this is Genya. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I missed you. I'm sorry. Uh, ah, it's okay, it's okay. Very sorry, Genya. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, no problem. Um, uh, Everything cannot the... be perfect, right? <laughs> yeah, right now the microphone is now perfect. <clears throat> anyway, um, as far as the impact factor is concerned, I think as compared to the robotics field, the, the impact factor number 2.5 is really good number. I think as compared to the robotics field, it will be ranked in top 10, I guess. So the general Termix is has a good number for impact factor. And I also um, uh, really agree with the, an, an idea of application of AI and controls as Ramon Gondres uh, recommended, but we, we carefully, or we, we need to pay attention to such kind of AI-based research, because those research sometimes just feed a bunch of training data to a machine learning framework and then test or verify it. So such kind of uh, research needs to have sort of clear program statement as well as to have a um, sense of academic aspects. So increasing the impact factor is a good way to to do provide such kind of um, AI based research, but we editors need to pay attention to such uh, aspect. That's about it. Yeah, thank you very much. Gene. It's a very valid point. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Gorsuch. Yeah, um, no, thanks. Uh, great comments from And I'd like to just also thank everyone for, you know, my opportunity just to serve as the editor in chief uh, it's been a great experience for me thus far. I, I would just ask, I, I put a question in the chat that I think is something we should all think about is, you know, what are the most pressing questions in determining the mobility of off-road vehicles and in particular autonomous systems off-road? Uh, if we think about what those fundamental challenges are, who, who cares about them and uh, who's working towards them and why would they publish in our journal? 
I think we should all think about that as we try to move forward as a, as a team in this specialized area. Because I, I suspect that other journals will try to take up these problems, even in terror mechanics when it comes to autonomy, because they say they're the ground vehicle autonomy journal. Um, but, you know, we, we have a really unique uh, aspect of it off road. And as I've uh, served on source selection boards for uh, large government contracts, what I saw was there wasn't a lot of people really thought through clearly the considerations, for example, of how you do off-road mobility quickly and the interaction of AI and controls, or more specifically, the autonomy stack that's on the vehicle and how it interacts with terror mechanics and how do you really optimize that problem. Uh, I think there's a tremendous amount of work and interest in, in the broader community to, to solve those problems and um, subsequent papers in the space coming. And I want to make sure that they come to this journal versus some other journal. But I, I think we should all think about what are those most pressing questions and they're out there. And, and as uh, in my role in NATO, we're, we're pushing to have U.S. Army adopt the new next-gen NERM standards. Uh, we're, we didn't really solve all the problems in off-road mobility, of course. So even without autonomous systems, there's still some things out there that we really haven't resolved, and there's interest in resolving. So again, uh, I think Terra Mechanics is well-positioned to collect those papers, and those would be very, very important papers and well-cited papers once they get out there. Uh, so anyway, I just want to make those comments of uh, Vladimir. I, to me, there's a lot of exciting new work in this space, and we're well positioned to capture and, and deliver that to the community. Over. Thank you very much, David. Uh, I believe you formulate the very key question, the most pressing questions to determine the mobility of autonomous system in off-road conditions. This is a very, very key question what we need to address. And uh, I believe uh, papers related to implementation of uh, uh, NRMM would be very important. So different aspects of NRMM and uh, journal could be a good place, a good platform to bring this to the audience. I believe after uh, uh, this um, STANREC on AVT 327 was approved, so now I believe it would be a good, good new year of uh, publishing papers on implementation of NRMM and explaining how to actually use NRMM in activity, in research activities and other activities related to um, NATO and other countries. Yeah, and and everyone you. doesn't, and just yeah. to add, if everyone doesn't know what STANREC means, it's the standard recommendation of NATO to move beyond the current NATO reference mobility model to a newer approach. Yeah, so thank you. I just thing. forgot to mention this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, as a last word, I would like to thank all uh, audience who came today for our meeting, the very first one. I believe we were, we were not able to answer probably all your questions you might have, but we are open for discussion. Please contact any of us, all of us, offline you have our email addresses at the uh, journal website and we will be happy to answer your questions and uh, facilitate your papers or your submissions when they come through the journal work with you uh, if needed offline thank you very much uh, indeed and uh, have a great day night morning whatever time of the day you have at your site so all the best the best Thank you, Dr. Thank Van you, Dr. Savage. Uh, before uh, we go off, off, I just had to, just had to give a few, give a few remarks. remarks. So, yeah, so, yeah we are in, promoting the, the ISTGS digital digital release, uh, which consists of alternating Terra Mechanics Byte and Student Research Seminars. So, for this series, additional information can be found at this link on the slide. and. The student research seminars, we invite graduate students and we are also inviting research professionals to participate in the Terra Mechanics Bytes. You can email either the contact hello at istvs.org or gs at istvs.org to uh, be a part of this digital event series. Also, we are in the process of developing the ISTVS resource initiative. The details can be found on this link. 
we are currently inviting graduate students uh, by the means of developing this initiative we want to develop an open source uh, wikipedia kind of thing just to get new graduates to new undergrads and graduate students new to researchers in this field like to have them an opportunity to read more about the materials related to anything specific in the domain of terra mechanics and also lastly the currently the istvs uh, membership drive is on and uh, it is a request from the istvs uh, board to uh, all the members current and uh, potential to go to these links and register themselves for the upcoming membership drive you're rogue. Thank you. Bye. All the best to everyone. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.